Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freak out tag. So I know that this tag is a, a little late uh, than, every, than the time when everyone else was doing theirs, but uh, I had summer school last month and that was when everyone was doing theirs and I didn't have time to film it, so. Here we are, here we go. I've been doing this tag, I think for every single year that I've been on booktube, so there should be three other videos and I'll try to remember to link them down below for you. They're always in my tags playlist on um, my channel page if you wanna check them out. And so here is the newest version. I'm excited, I love having this tag to do every single year. When it comes to how many books I've read this year, I've actually read about 130 but that number also includes my DNFs. I've, I've DNFed a couple and I kind of count that on my Goodreads or Goodreads counts that for me. Uh, so I don't know the exact number. So first question is best book you've read so far in 2021. So far right now, it is definitely Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. I love this book, the third book, a part of the Brown Sisters series. I love it. The grumpy sunshine dynamic in here is amazing. I love it. I, this book is just perfection. It is. It's perfection in a romance book. I love it so much. I feel like Talia Hibbert can honestly do no wrong. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far in 2021. So there's a few. <laughs> Not all of them have one answer, okay? Uh, obviously you have actor A.G. Brown, but I already talked about that. So let's talk about Let's talk about something else. Okay, uh, we have The Savior by J.R. Ward. This is, I don't know the exact number, but it's way into the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. I am in the minority where like, I loved this book. I love this and a lot of my Goodreads friends did not. They gave it a three, three star or lower and I loved this. It is a five star, it's my favorite book from June. I loved this. The Black Dagger Brotherhood is a vampire romance series if you didn't know. I, I love it. I love it so much. The romance in there was just everything and then normally whenever there's a couple in that series, um, later on in the series, you also get um, some snippets of another couple from one of the previous books and it has my favorite couple. John Matthew was one of them and I love John Matthew so much. And so we get a, a story about him and the story, like the ending of the book about him was just everything to me. It left me in tears. It meant so much to me. And then I also, I feel like read over half of the Immortals After Dark series this year. I've loved so many of them. I'm completely caught up on the series right now, but I feel like my favorite that I read this year at least um, is definitely Wicked Abyss, which is the current last book out in the series. Oh my gosh, that one is so good. It's very Hades and Persephone like esque. You have a fae princess that's like a reincarnation of this previous fae princess who was mates to, he's now basically the devil. He like, he controls like uh, the hell realm and he, he's like starting to turn into what like a devil looks like with like red skin and horns and a tail. And he notices that his mate who kind of like jilted him in the past and ruined him in the past, he realized that she's a reincarnation. So he takes this reincarnation and steals her to his dimension and like keeps her in the hell dimension and like a prison or whatever. And she is not happy about this at all. This is hot, y'all. This book was fire, amazing. I loved it, five stars for me. Question number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. I have a few. Currently I am reading A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. This is her newest um, fantasy release and I am adoring it so far. I'm 75% of the way through. I am adoring it. Um, that will be in my new ARC reading vlog that I will be posting sometime in the future, you guys. <laughs> um, so you'll have like more thoughts about that whenever that video comes out, but I am adoring that. And like, not a lot of people are talking about it and more people need to because so far it is amazing. And then later on my TBR that I hopefully will be reading later this month, if the audiobook comes in this month, if not, then I'll read it next month, is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling. I love Katie Robert. I love Hades and Persephone retelling. So I feel like this is just a recipe for a good time. I know a lot of people love this book. This is her first, I feel like traditionally published one if I'm not mistaken. And I feel like it's just gonna be amazing. I can't wait to read it. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Okay, I have a few listed here. Um, first we have the next two books, a part of the Ice Home series by Ruby Dixon. We for sure are getting two 
um, this year. One that just came out literally, I think yesterday for me filming right now, um, which is Steph's Outcast, um, which I'm so excited for because this one has a language barrier in here because he doesn't speak the same language as her. And I am a sucker, sucker. <laughs> for language barrier books, y'all. That's why I feel like I love so many alien romances because they have the language barrier. I'm just, I'm a sucker for it, I am. Um, and then the other book, a part of the Isom series that we're for, sure, we're for sure getting this year is Sam's Secret, which is the next book after Steph's Outcast in the Isom series. I love this series, I love Ruby Dixon, I love the blue aliens, so I'm excited for both of these. We also have Devil in Disguise by Lisa Kleepis. This is the next book in the Ravenel series. I love the Ravenel so much, so I'm so excited for this book. Um, my friends who have read ARCs love this one and I can't wait to read it. I think it comes out later on in July. And also we have The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I loved the previous two books. We have uh, The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test. I love this. Juan in The Bride Test was one of the best characters. So I love how he's gonna have his own book in here. Um, I don't remember the specific date this book comes out, but I'm excited nonetheless. Then for question number five, we have a biggest disappointment. I don't get disappointed by books a lot. Um, I don't like to set my expectations up too high for books that I'm unsure about. For books that I know that I'll love, I'll have high expectations for because like I know I'm gonna love them. Um, so I feel like one that I felt like kind of was a disappointment because it was my first book by this author and I was looking forward to reading more by this author because I've collected a few of her books and this book was just bad. <laughs> I wanted to love Heartless by Kat Martin. I, I hated this. I did. Um, this was one of my TBR jar picks in my previous months in 2021 and um, if you didn't know, whenever I pick a book out of my TBR jar, I have to read it and do a ded dedicated reading vlog for it. I hate doing um, rant reviews. It's not really my thing. <laughs> I know that I do have a few on my channel and unfortunately there are some videos that get a lot of views and I honestly hate making them. So I didn't enjoy making this. The thumbnail does not look like I hated the book. I took the thumbnail before I read the book because I didn't think I would hate it but there was just a lot of racist comments, a lot of um, things about sexual assault that weren't addressed at all. I hated the hero, hated the heroine. I hated everything about it. And I don't hate books a lot, but I hated this. And which is very disappointing because I own quite a few Kat Martin books because I love her step backs of her, her historicals so much. So very disappointing. I'm not looking forward to reading her books right now. Um, if you love a Kat Martin book, if you love one, please leave it down below and I will maybe check it out. Number six is Biggest Surprise. Okay, I have two, one of which is not a romance book. So uh, earlier this year in my spring semester, I, when I was in college, I took a young adult literature class and one of the books that we had to read was so surprising and how much I loved it. And that's Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I loved this. I thought it was so whimsical and fun. This is like a fantasy, young adult book I feel like also kind of like could be middle grade where like this is about Sophie who works in this hat shop and then she gets a curse put on her to like look and act like and nobody knows that she's actually a little girl instead of an old woman's body like she gets turned into an old woman and then she goes to see like this wizard of the town who lives in this castle that just like moves around named Howell and Howell is very arrogant and very superficial and um i just there's just so many fun dynamics a part of that book i loved it i have not gotten around to reading to watching the movie yet um but i've heard great things about the movie but i have heard also that it is very different from the movie the movie's the movie's quite different than the book so but i i'm surprised by how much i really enjoyed that book um when it comes to romance books i was very surprised that i loved misadventures of the first daughter by meredith wilde this is a bodyguard romance um the heroine is the daughter to the president of the united states and the hero is one of her bodyguards it's very forbidden and they've been pining after one another and the dam finally breaks and they emit their feelings for one another it is hot i read this in june and i really liked it surprisingly i feel like it's because i read book number three a part of the series before this one and that one was horrible <laughs> to me and so I think I was just so surprised that I loved this one. Question number seven is favorite new author debut or new to you? I am definitely going to be going with Cara Bastone. I have loved her books. I've only read 
two of them and I have loved them. I read Just a Heartbeat Away. That is an age gap romance where the hero falls in love with his son's previous teacher. She used to be his kindergarten teacher. Now she's the school counselor. That book is so good. I loved it so much. And then I also read the sequel, which is Can't Help Falling, which is about um, the best friends to the characters from the first book and they're falling for one another. And that one's kind of like another age gap and kind of like a single parent as well. I love both of these. Cara Stone, her writing is just, I feel like phenomenal. And she does slow burns so well. Both of these were slow burn romances. There's a lot of character development. You get to actually physically see how and why these couples love each other. Like what was the spark? What made them start falling for one another? What was the reason? Like I can't stand romance books where people just like start start falling for one another but I don't see the reason as to why. What sparks you for falling for them? What sparks you for liking them? And like in her books you get to you get to totally read about like these characters journeys in noticing these people and loving these people. Question number eight is the newest fictional crush. I had a hard time reading this and then immediately right before I made this list I finished this book and the hero in this book is my kind of hero. Okay, that is Theo from Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese, y'all. I love Theo. Theo is the nerdy, sweet, virgin hero who has a stutter and is a TA at a college and like, I love him. I want him. I want this cinnamon roll, sweet, cute as heck boy. I want him. Like, that's my kind of hero. I love the nerdy, sweet, caring ones. Oh, Gosh, I want Theo so bad. So this romance is about Theo and um, he meets one of these students that he is a, like a TA in this class. So he meets one of the students in the class and um, I forget her name, but she immediately sees Theo and is like, I want him. I want him. So you kind of like have like the girl pursuing the guy more so in this one. And I feel like we really see that in romance books. And I, I loved that. I love that so much. Oh, this book is just everything. Theo is my kind of guy. I want him. Question number nine is newest favorite character. When it comes to a non-romance book, y'all know that I love if you watched my Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson dedicated reading vlog or no, dedicated review. I loved Silas from, from Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I loved him. He is a demon. I love him. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that because I have a, that whole video is basically me gushing over and loving Silas. And then I also loved Lady Phoebe from Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. I loved her. She is blind in this historical romance book. She falls for her bodyguard. And I love how independent and loving and caring and how strong of a woman she is. She is, she is everything. I love her so much. Question number 10 is book that made you cry. The only book this year that has made me cry is A Quarter of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. This is the um, continuation to the A Quarter of Thorns and Roses series all about Nesta and Cassian. I, I, I connected to Nesta in a lot of ways and her friends. Her friends, their relationship, I feel like impacted me more than her and Cassian's relationship. I loved her friendship story and her making friends and I, I I just loved it. I loved it so much. Question number 11 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. I don't have all my books with me currently. I'm at my parents' house for the summer and so I only have kind of like these books to choose from. I don't really have one physically on me. Ooh, wait, you know what? So let me get it. So this book I just recently purchased. Um, I'm gonna be showing it my recent book haul, but it's this historical that is like holographic. This is a time travel historical and this woman like time travels and it's you you don't see her and then you see her. You don't see her and then you see her like That's amazing. I I love that. That is so cool. Um, two other historicals that I love that I don't have on me that I love and adore Door. Um, we have The Dragon and the Jewel by Virginia Henley, historical romance. I love the cover. The gold part of this book, you can't see it based off the picture, obviously, but it is shiny, only the gold parts of this book. It is 
beautiful. It's one of my most beautiful books that I own. And then my other one, my favorite step back that I bought this year is most definitely The Price of Indiscretion by Kathy Maxwell. I love that step back. You can't really see the step back based off of this. I had it in one of my previous book hauls that I filmed for y'all. Um, but yeah, I love that step back so much. It's a two page step back and they're like in bed together with these like curtains, like sheer white curtains over them. It is is stunning it is stunning and lastly question number 12 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year i have quite a few so right here i have listed the rest of the black dagger brotherhood series that needs to happen i'm trying to read all of ruby dixon's backlist by the end of the year so i have to read all of the rest of her books that i have not read yet i am i feel like i'm almost there i'm almost there to finishing all of the books i have the rest of the between Dawn and Dusk series by Jamie Schlosser. That's a fantasy romance series that I really love. Um, two of them are on my July TBR. If you want to check my out my July TBR, I'll link it down below for you. A specific book that I need to read is definitely The Ippos King by Grace Draven. This is book number three. I've heard of the Radiance, the Wraith King series, and I love Radiance so much. That's my favorite romance book of all time, and um, I love it, and I can't believe I still haven't read The Ippos King yet. <laughs> I need to. I like I want to pick it up as soon as possible. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. I feel like that happens a lot with my favorite books. If a sequel comes out, I don't know why I put off reading reading it. I just do. I don't know why my brain does it. But I love this series so much and I just need to freaking read this book by the end of the year. It needs to happen. So there you have it. That was the mid-year book freakout tag. Please let me know down below if you have done this tag, if you want me to check out this tag, if you've read any of the books that I've talked about, or let me know any of your answers to any of the questions that I talked about in this video. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.